today we have the handover for a 2015 Warwick XL. As always, we'll begin under the cab. These are fitted with the Alco um, air ride system. So you have two removable dust caps for want of a better description. Use a small foot pump or a low pressure compression pump um, to inflate, keep it within the green zone. They are there basically to enhance uh, the ride and handling if the vehicle is laden. You've got swivel seats and backrests. These are a series seat. So you have one corner molding which operates the backrest. And then you have the opposite corner molding which operates the swivel seat mechanism to pull out on the corner. And then you can then rotate the seat or adjust the backrest. Underneath the cab carpet, you've got your uh, engine battery, and then at the end of the dashboard, your pilot release. Fuel filler cap, pop open, and then ignition key in, and then twist, and then obviously you can put your fuel into there. Under your Peugeot badge, you've got a lever, pull up on that one, and that allows you to open up the bonnet. Over on the left hand side you've got your screen washer fluid and then underneath here by removing these caps you can access your brake fluid, power steering and uh, radiator water. Oil for the cap on top of the block and then down the front of the engine bay you've got your dipstick. Should you ever need to jump start the vehicle then the negative goes onto this little bolt here and then using the tip of the ignition key you can release a little cap pop it up and that enables you then to get to the positive and you can jump start the vehicle. On your driver's side you've got your gas fill point so you have an LPG tank which is underneath pop off the little cover when you drive to your gas station a little bit like filling up with diesel uh, you've got a bayonet connection which goes onto there twist the uh, the nozzle and then you should be able to fill the tank with gas. When you are filling these with gas with a standard pump when you Feel the nozzle kick back on you, stop filling. Don't try and compress any more gas into that. It can actually end up damaging the system. And also with the gas system, uh, make sure that you uh, don't let the tanks run dry. On this one, when you turn on the ignition and fire up the vehicle, you will actually get the display showing you how much content of gas you've got on the tank. To turn the gas on, underneath the vehicle you will see a large black box. At the bottom of that black box there is a plastic clip. Undo that clip and the front of the box comes free. Inside there you will see a brass ring. Turn it anti-clockwise to open the valve. Turn it all the way till it comes to its end stop and then turn it back a fraction. Then you can return the cover. The only time you're likely to be required to close that off will be if you're shutting the vehicle down totally for the winter months or if you're going onto a ferry. A ferry operator may want you to disconnect your gas at source. If the gas has been disconnected at source, the regulator, which is now being pointed to now, is a drive safe regulator. It has a reset button, which is uh, round the other side of the vehicle but you'll feel it quite simply press that in for a count of three and then release and that is the gas regulator reset that regulator will only be need to be reset if you switch the gas off completely or if the vehicle has been involved in a collision because that's a safety cutout valve that senses any vibration from an impact to lock everything back in place just push that back plastic clip firmly home Toilet cassette, unlock the doors, flush water on these comes directly from your onboard fresh water tank. Sorry, got a bit of a breeze here, so it won't blow back on us. And then pull up on the yellow lever at the base, slide the whole cassette out. If you feel any kind of resistance when it's coming out, then it could be because the slide has not been shut properly. On a campsite, you have collection points for these to go into. So you take the yellow cap off the top, tip the whole thing up, press the yellow button at the top of the base. That allows the airflow to go into the top and the waste out the bottom. Before you load it back in, there's a measuring cup inside the top of these caps. So up to a cap full of green chemical, because we're up here in the highlands, we like to look after environment. Mix that with about two liters of water, and then slide the body of the set back in to its holder, and it should lock into position nice and firmly.
Further along, you've got your mains hook up. So we've got this one connected to the mains already, but I'll just illustrate, just pull back on the cap, pop the lever down. When you're connecting up, I advise that you connect to the side of the van, first of all, and then the side post that you're gonna be using. That gives you a safer means of connection. Sometimes you need a little bit of a tweak on these, uh, but there's an option of an exterior, exterior aerial connection, I should say, um, on the outside body of the van. Um, but there's a very good um, omnidirectional aerial up on the roof. Exhaust vent for the blown air uh, heating system and the water heating system if you're operating it on gas. You might see a little condensation plume around those sometimes when they're on. And then next door to that, you've got your water fill point. So there's a whale system that connects onto that and enables you to fill up with water. And then just under the skirt, if we just step back, you've got your fresh water drain point uh, almost behind the wheel arch. And then further down, just under the toilet cassette, you've got your grey water one for draining off the tank underneath the van for the shower tray, vanity units and kitchen sink. On the passenger side, you've got an external gas barbecue point. Um, so there'll be a little fitting which goes onto the end of your barbecue hose, which pushes up into there. And then you can then turn the gas supply on. As an alternative to using the whale system, you've got a conventional water filler. So a regular hose pipe straight in, and that allows you to fill that with that. There's some winter covers in the passenger side door pocket. Uh, they protect obviously the uh, fridge vents from the elements uh, for storage, as well as giving you a better performance if you are trying to use it in cold weather. Normally we would demonstrate the awning for you, but it's exceptionally windy today, so we're going to use an extract from another video um, to explain that. Tee up into the slot for the awning. These are sunshades, so wet or windy conditions, these should be put away. Wind the awning out to a point where you can access the legs and squeeze each leg in in turn. and then slide the leg through. Because these are new, they do need a firm press back to lock the legs into position. Same story with the other side. And then you can walk the legs out and walk the awning out accordingly. It's a bit windy uh, today, so we won't fully extend this one. To retract it, Fold the leg lock back in and let the whole leg come back up through your fingertips. And then use the push bar then to then lock it back into position like so, so it's spring loaded back onto that stub. Same story with the other side. Fold the leg down. and then just make sure that it goes back in onto the stub, like so. Retract the awning, back in. It's worth mentioning that you should really have the sliding door shut when you're opening and closing, to stop the underside of the pelmet from catching the top of the door. And when you open the sliding door, you've got several uh, switches here for the interior light and for the awning light, as well as these uh, cool blue lights that are running underneath the board there. And then finally, you've got your electric step function on that one as well. Up above your head when you come in, you've got your sergeant control panel for the 12 volt operation inside the van. So you use the first switch uh, to light up the screen. Um, here it's showing you your voltmeter, any solar uh, panel input and any draw um, or gain um, that's going into the battery that's been selected. You can switch between the batteries by pressing the leisure and vehicle battery. So you now see that the shift now has gone onto the leisure battery. It's showing you the available ampere within the system as well. Scroll down through these um, arrows and you can set up um, not only your uh, normal clock, but you actually set up an alarm timer as well. And then you come back to the front. We've drained, because of the time of year, we've drained the fresh water and the wastewater tanks uh, down to zero. Uh, but we'll have them filled up ready for the collection uh, for you.
Other switches include the awning light as well as um, adjustment for the interior light. And then you've got your uh, tank heater controls on there as well. Moving along, you've got your Truma water heater room heater system. So when you tap in on this button, it will give you your controls for your heating systems. It's worthwhile mentioning that you need to turn this panel on and off uh, before or after you turn on the 12 volt uh, control panel. So have the 12 volt control panel on, then select the Truma panel. Um, if you do it the other way around, it can throw up an additional error code. For the room heating systems, you've got these uh, water heating systems, you've got these dials that emerge at the top. If you use the bezel, you can see that I'm making individual characters flash. Because it's such a cold day, we've already got the heating up and running in this one. But what you would normally do is select onto that bezel dial and then use the thermostat either to turn the system off, if it was the summer, or set it to a desired interior temperature. We normally opt for around about 21, 22 degrees. Water heating, you will have drawn the water through the system um, via the, the onboard uh, tank, as you would do with all Truma models. And then you can then select to heat the water um, either to a 40 or a 60 degree setting or boost it um, if it uh, needed to be reheated partially after use. It's a gas and electric system and you can use the dial again to choose a gas if you were wild camping. Um, or a combination of electric and gas, either on a low electric setting or a higher electric setting, depending on the amperage that's available to you. And then a pure electric, again, a low amperage um, and a higher draw. There's a circulation fan, which you can use as well. Um, normally it sits um, in an eco mode, again, because it's cold, we've just boosted up the temperature. So we've got it on that high mode, but it's easy enough to adjust down. It's worth noting that if we turn off all of the water heating and room heating systems completely. Quickly take that one down. We lose all the symbols across the top. If we go back to our fan symbol, you can just use it as a circulation fan on its own. So in warmer weather, you can just recirculate the airflow around the inside of the fan. Timer on the bottom and a clock, so you can set up any of those functions for the room heating or for the water heating to run through a timer that cuts in and cuts out, and the normal settings button for adjusting the brightness and the language of the control panel. In the lounge area underneath the bench seat, you have your main sergeant control uh, box. There's a system shutdown button that you can select that completely turns off the 12 volt system in the back of the vehicle. Um, if it's left off when you're traveling, it prohibits any energy coming through from the engine battery to charge the leisure battery. So for general use, you would always have it on. This generation of panel replicates some of the fi fixtures and fittings that are on the um, control panel above the sliding door. So you can turn on and turn off your um, 12 volt supply at this point. You can also select the water pump and interior light and also interchange uh, between the battery settings. Below that, you've got a bank of uh, 12 volt fuses. Within the vehicle, there is a label um, that shows you um, what each of the fuses is also replicated in the handbook as well. On the opposite side, you've got your mains hook up your RCD switches. We'll quickly just turn off all of the mains supply. So on the outside of the van, you would have connected up to the side of the van and then your sight post. Lift up on the blue switch. You should be able to do a quick test to make sure that the main supply is working safely. And then you can then come across and select the mains RCD switches accordingly. You'll always want to have your battery charger on. And as I say, you can choose which battery you want to charge up. And then if you're wanting to operate the water heater or the room heating system on mains electric, you will need to have these switches selected as well. Down just next to the heater pipe under the bed, you've got your wastewater tank heater switch. Further along, you've got the battery charger and your leisure battery. And then under the seat, this one van came fitted with a uh, removable uh, tow bar. And because you've got the Asuri seats in the front, um, you've got your toolkit there in the back. Underneath the adjacent bench is your mains cable, leveling wedges. Your Thetford fridge has a raised switch at one end, which you can use to turn 
the device on and off. Beyond that, then you're using uh, a touchscreen facility. So the first button that you come to that's touchscreen allows you to choose between your different modes, so be it mains, um, battery or gas. Uh, there's also an automatic mode where it'll interchange uh, subject to the available energy around it. And then your adjacent control is for the thermostat, the more of those cubes that are lit up from the, uh, the power for it. On the bed box side, you've also got your thermostatic drain valve for the water heater. Um, it's a little bit obscure to find, so you have to sort of uh, really keep your head around um, to get to it. This blue tap on the uh, side at the moment means that the valve is open. If it's in the direction of the blue running pipe that's next to it, like so, then it typically means that it's closed. If you want to reset the water heater, you'll need to make sure that first of all, um, that's in the relevant position, so it's in line with the blue tap. Um, I have to follow my finger right the way down to the bottom, but there's a little raised blue button that pops out and that needs to get pushed back in to allow the reset to occur. If it doesn't push back in, you may have to have the running heating system on. As soon as you've done all that, uh, turn your cold water taps on, draw the water through the system and then switch it over to the hot water. It'll take a little bit longer, especially with the kitchen tap because uh, it's on the other side of the vehicle. Um, give it about maybe two minutes or so for the whole tank system to fill up and then you can go about heating up the water and using the room heating system. Gas and oven is fairly straightforward. You've got normal electronic igniter onto the front. Go for the biggest burner first of all and draw it through. Hold it in for a few seconds and then work your way around them like so. And that basically fires up on for your hob. There's no thermostatic lids on these, so you need to make sure everything's cooled down. Bring the foils in, and then you can bring the lid down on top. For the oven and grill, turn the dial anti-clockwise for the oven to work, and then turn it in the opposing direction for your gas grill. The side sliding windows that are in the bathroom and on the sliding door pinch the tabs together and then pull the whole thing across. There's a couple of different ratchet positions that you can set it into, but for travelling make sure that they are fully closed and not blind and fly screens on there as well. Sort of bowl toilet. On the far side you've got your lever which you will need to pull across to open up into the wastegate and then you can then push down on the bezel. It's drawing water from the onboard tank and that will then swizzle around the inside of the bowl like so. Close your lever over afterwards, softly smells road is coming back up through. When the cassette is approaching full, you'll get an indicator light on there telling you that it needs to be empty. So there are three different types of roof lights um, in this van. In the bathroom, it's just a simple push-up mechanism. So just with the blind pull back, pull up like so, and push up accordingly. You can adjust the tilt against the wind direction, but when you're traveling, you do need to make sure that the roof light is fully drawn back down. The smaller central roof lights above the kitchen, just turn the tab round and then you can just use your fingers just to push it up on a slight ratchet position all the way up to around about 45 degrees and then pull it all the way back down. You can leave it in a ventilated position, uh, maybe for overnight use, but again, for traveling, you do need to make sure that it's down in the fully closed position from that. Finally, at the back, you've got a winding handle version. So turn it clockwise to unwind. Just stuck on the seat. Let's yeah. start again. Sorry. Three, two, one. So finally, at the back, you've got a winding handle version. Turn it through in a clockwise direction to wind it up and then turn it anti-clockwise. When you get it down to the baseline, just give it one more little turn and it should then lock back into position. It should be nice and firm, ready for travel. Cab controls are fairly straightforward, classic Peugeot. So the ignition key on, we can operate our exterior lights. There's a bezel on the end of the stalk for choosing um, your dipped um, headlights and then push away, sorry, pull towards you for the main beam. Below that, you've got your cruise control. And so again, turn up and then use the plus or minus to set the control on there. 
radio controls uh, and telephone controls on the steering wheel. Right hand stalk is for your wiper controls, so you can adjust the um, intermittency uh, function as well as obviously do your activate your screen wash. If I turn the wheel slightly, then behind you've got your forward and rear fog lights as well as a headlamp beam adjustment. Over on the driver's door, you've got your electric mirror adjustments as well as your electric windows. And then when we come back towards the center of the vehicle, you've got your heated mirror positions as well as central locking, and then your ventilation controls and directional controls along with the air conditioning. Radio function is fairly straightforward. Above your cup holders, you've got a USB um, auxiliary input which goes into the media unit up at the top. So the controls on that include your volume and then obviously you can set up any radio radio you can obviously access then any media that you plug into as well as setting up the functions for your bluetooth controls as well so we cover the basics for your handover video for the warwick sincerely hope the van's going to give you lots of miles and lots of smiles uh, but we're always on hand to answer any questions hope you enjoy driving the vehicle and thank you very much for watching